Hi everyone, this is Justin Gray from Synthesis Sound. Today I'll be making a video on Dolby Atmos music production specifically geared towards helping you understand how to prepare your music for production in this format. Before I continue with the video, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can check out previous videos on Dolby Atmos music production as well as music production in general. And if you'd like to connect and hear some of the music that I've worked on, please do visit my website at www.synthesissound.com. So, as I mentioned, I have previous videos that on this YouTube channel that are dedicated to explaining and un, uh, um, understanding the potential of the Dolby Atmos format. Those videos explore everything from uh, audio examples so that you can listen in headphones and experience immersive audio, as well as looking at some of the technicalities that make this audio format so engaging and unique. What I'd like to do today is really clarify what we have to do to prepare our music for this format. And what I hope is encouraging is that there is not one way to do it, but, but actually multiple ways that we can prepare our music for Dolby Atmos music production, um, all the way from getting it you know, into its mix format to final delivery. So I'll start off by explaining sort of the most grandiose option, which is, of course, to start conceiving your music from the ground up in this format. Once you understand the potential of immersive audio, the potential of object placement, again, things which have been covered in previous videos, um, we can actually begin to compose music from the ground up for this environment. Um, I do think that this is something that has already now begun as the uh, ecosystem for Dolby Atmos and immersive audio is growing fast. Um, and I really look forward to the opportunity to work with people who are um, engaged in creating music for this format. Um, of course, you know, as with any compositional um, process, I think that, it, that engaging with an engineer like myself or someone working in this format is very helpful to do early on in the process so that you can best understand how to efficiently document your music, create your music, so that it can seamlessly flow into uh, the mix and mastering process. The second option here, which I would call like remix stem delivery, from either a stereo or a multi-channel mix is the most common. Uh, certainly so far has been the most common for me as a mixing engineer. And what does this mean? Let's say, for instance, you have um, a song, an EP, or an album that is already out in the world. It has been produced in stereo, as the majority of music has been for uh, decades now. It's been produced in stereo. You went all the way from tracking to editing to mixing to mastering, and it is now out in the world. Well especially with uh, recent announcements from Apple and the inclusion of App Dolby Atmos Music on services like Tidal um, and Amazon, um, the opportunity to re-engage with your listeners with an Atmos re-release is something that I highly encourage and I think that we're going to see become quite popular uh, in the coming weeks, months, and years. And so to do this is a relatively simple process. What we need to do is go back to the point, in the, um, the point in the production process that makes the most sense typically would be basically going right before mastering, going to your mix session, and stemming out, which means to, to bounce down or to um, deliver each individual part of your mix with as much information as you, know, you or we decide is necessary. And by doing that stem out process, you will then deliver all of those individual parts which have already been edited and in many ways may have already been, let's say, sonically manipulated by your mix engineer to the degree that you were proud of, that you decided to you know, send for mastering and put into the world. If we can go to that point just before mastering and you stem out each element of your mix or you know, an appropriate amount of that information and you deliver it to me, I then have the ability to remix that in the immersive audio Dolby Atmos space within this, this objects-based sphere. Um, the more layers you give me, the more control I have to use the space. So typically with uh, a lot of mix processes, um, and a mix engineer would have at least control over many of the elements. We may have already um, amalgamated things like drum tracks if we're using analog hardware, etc. But in a lot of cases, you'll find that the mix engineer has access to delivering quite a few of those individual mix elements. So 
this ability to remix in Dolby Atmos is the re-spatialization of that mix. Now, um, when I, what I've written here is that we can have this be pre-processing or post-processing. In a lot of cases, I believe if you've gone to the degree of producing an album to the degree that you wanted to master it, we should be looking at essentially just stemming out the music post-processing, meaning that if you've already made the drums sound the way you want, well, deliver them that way. If you've already made the bass sound the way you want, deliver it that way. Same with the vocals. The one consideration is to take reverbs and effects and ideally at least deliver them on separate stems. And this is because, let's take a vocal as an example. If you have produced your vocal and you have a, a beautiful collection of stereo reverbs and delays that are creating a stereo space for the vocal. In the Dolby Atmos ecosystem, I can use that stereo reverb, and I likely will, especially if you've produced it and, and, and you're proud of it and it's integral to the, uh, to the emotion of your, you know, your, your production. However, I also have the ability to use immersive audio tools like you know, uh, 714, which are the amount of channels uh, in the Dolby Atmos uh, mix process, uh, like 12 channel reverbs, delays, etc. And so if you can give me what is referred to as a dry stem, the vocals without reverb, um, and, and we separate them into two things, I now have the ability to not only include what you gave me, but then also add with full control um, and therefore spatialize each element according to this atmosphere. And so the remix can be very authentic. The remix doesn't just mean taking something and, you know, putting this here, putting this here. We can truly rebuild uh, an entire world for your song. So this remix stem delivery, I mean, this process is not foreign to um, the film world, which, is, which commonly, um, in, a, in film music production, we commonly deliver stems to a remix engineer who then decides exactly how the music's going to fit with the dialogue, etc., and even in some uh, contemporary mastering um, environments, the idea of what's called stem mastering, where you might deliver uh, a collection of parts of the mix so that the mastering engineer has a little bit more control over the finite levels of things. It is not unlike that at all. A very common practice, and you could go back to your mix engineer um, and likely with very little effort uh, produce those stems, and we can get started. Discrete multi-channel production. What this refers to is down here. There are some tools out there, specifically by Sound Particles and EarCam, um, where producers, audio producers, have the ability to work within multi-channel production suites that are not necessarily Dolby Atmos. For instance, I have a, a good friend and client that I'm working on a record where this artist has done incredible work producing 12-channel recordings um, uh, in various uh, circumstances and then using 12-channel um, production techniques from things like sound particles to produce the music in advance for 12 channels. With this type of uh, what I would refer to, refer to as discrete multi-channel production in the sense that you have already conceived how your music is going to live in this multi-channel universe. Uh, there are ways, which I've worked through many of them, and of course there are always uh, other ways to do things, but there are ways that I've figured out that you could then deliver that information to me and I can translate your uh, vision into the Dolby Atmos ecosystem. This is a really powerful um, way to essentially use these unbelievable production tools, like again, like sound, sound particles and, and ear cam, etc., or even just you know working in a in a flexible DAW like Reaper, where you have the ability to to really manipulate multi-channel audio however you want, however you conceive, and then bring that to someone like myself to Brit to essentially put into the Dolby Atmos ecosystem because Dolby Atmos is such a flexible, powerful, and ubiquitous format for delivering immersive audio to the end user. The last one I'll bring up to your attention is upmixing. So this is very common. I think that you'll find that a lot of the uh, material that is out there in the world right now in Dolby Atmos, uh, a great deal of it has been upmixed. What does upmixing mean? There are incredible digital tools that have been created by companies like Nugent Audio, which are the ones that I use, um, 
where essentially these tools are taking stereo or multi-channel, let's say 5.1 or 7.1 uh, productions or, or audio sources, which are discrete channel. And that, again, that just means that they're not object-based. They're audio sources that were specifically designed for a set of speakers or a set of sound sources. Um, and these upmix tools are using incredible mathematics uh, and, and other various psychoacoustic effects to then uh, expand that music into further multi-channel formats. And this is possible everywhere, all the way from a stereo mix um, to a 5-1 mix to a 7-1 mix, uh, where we can expand that to meet the needs of the Dolby Atmos ecosystem. Of course, the advantages are that it's extremely efficient. Um, the you know, production cost and, and efficiency rates are as, as good as possible. The disadvantages, of course, is that we don't have the ability to fully maximize the potential, the creative potential of uh, specific object placement and specific, um, you know, just specific use of the maximum potential of this format. But, for instance, if you've got a stereo master that needs to find its way into this format so that you can engage with your listeners, uh, absolutely possible. And so, to, to recap, we've got stem production, we've got this multi-channel production format, and upmixing. These three approaches offer amazing flexibility for being able to prepare to produce music in this format. Um, I, I really look forward to and encourage the idea of considering for upcoming projects, how can you use this sort of audio revolution that is Dolby Atmos to engage your listeners in a new, in a new way? Um, please do look for f future uh, YouTube videos on the subject where I'm going to be exploring mastering in the format. For those of you who want to mix in the format but would like to work with a mastering engineer who can help to finalize, um, author, and, and, and you know just guarantee that your music translates at the best level possible, um, as well as the end user experience. I'm going to make one um, specifically dedicated to how are people experiencing this format, what are the considerations now, and where is it going in the future. So thanks again. If you'd like, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel, www.synthesissound.com, and uh, check out the studios, check out some of the music, and of course, you know, just listen and enjoy. So thanks so much, and look forward to connecting.